couple of words yeah, about this is the hand going to play. So the first, the first piece is an excerpt from my play when little sleeps and wakes go at images and I call it Fandango. Fandango. So uh, this ballet is about 20 minutes long and I was given eight by choreographer. Choreographer gave me eight Goya drawings. So, and, uh, so I had already a set of pictures or drawings on which I based this um, ballet. And uh, uh, this particular movement based on the drawings <coughs> called the uh, lovers sitting on a rock. In my piece, of course, they are not sitting, but it's love duet or I call it love duel. And uh, there are two pieces on which I base um, uh, the two uh, themes on which I base my music. It's woman's theme and men's theme. And in this particular piece, uh, the, uh, uh, there are contrapuntal combination of these two tunes, and uh, so wo woman wins in this particular piece, <laughs> in this love duel. But at the very end, there is a drawing, which you will not hear today, but uh, at the very end, there is a drawing, woman killing a sleeping man. So it actually finished badly. Ah, no, in this piece, man wins. And at the end of ballet, so there is last picture, woman killing a sleeping man. So which means that, you know, she kind of <laughs> won, I guess. So uh, this is Fandango or Love Duet or Love Duel, whatever you like more. <laughs>
Schimmel, who premiered my pin, pin, pin scan blue. Oh, who, premier, who premiered my piece, Pinsk and Blue? Is it good? <laughs> yeah, and uh, we recorded it for compact disc entitled Pinsk and Blue. And uh, um, we played it many times, and we are going to play it for you today. So what it is about, why, why it is called Pinsk and Blue, it's not a mistake. Pinsk is a city in Belarus, and I'm from Belarus. So, and I'm actually from Minsk, and this is Pinsk. So, <laughs> and it was commissioned by a uh, professor of the City University of New York, whose grandparents are from Pinsk. So when, when I presented him with a piece, I said, would you like to name it? So he commissioned it. He said, yes, it will be called Pinsk and Blue. I said, so be it. So why Blue? Because the first half of the piece is Belarusian, and this has set of variations on Belarusian tune. And uh, Belarusian tune, uh, kind of, uh, uh, it's tune of the dance called Kadril, and Kadril uh, was very popular in Belarusian village at the beginning of 20th century and the 19th, beginning of 20th century. It's a composed tune, it's not real Kadril, but in the spirit. And then in the middle of the piece, there is a jazz tune which appears, so, and then set, set of variations on jazz tune. And at the end, both tunes sounds simultaneously. As you can see, I love counterpoint. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that is why it is Pinsk and Blue. <laughs> so, and it's, it has kind of immigration ideas, I understand. So it starts in Belarus and finish in America. So, um, and in fact, so um, there will be a couple CDs if you are, will be interested in CDs. So Pinsk and Blue. Yeah. So, yeah. As you notice, uh, I'm wearing my uh, first man of the village outfit. Uh, <laughs> if you lived in a small village in Eastern Europe, there was always a musician, and he was considered the first man in the village. He was very, very important because whenever there was a, an event, he would show up as his accordion. Uh, your christening, your uh, your uh, bar mitzvah, uh, your uh, your wedding your funeral, uh, your trial, uh, uh, whatever, the, he was there. And of course, over, the, uh, over a course of time, this man became very, very, very important because he knew everything about everybody. <laughs> he, he had your number, basically. And, and, he, and if he lived to a ripe old age, and then eventually if he died, his son would take over. And he would look exactly the same. And he would pass on, <laughs> and he would pass on that tradition. Uh, and. Um, and, 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 and many, many first men of the village, when they left those villages and came to America, uh, they realized that they really couldn't be the first man in a, in, in, a, in a large city anymore. So many of them opened up those local music stores that you may have remembered in the 1950s, you know, where you bought music in the front and then you went back and took a lesson. Uh, growing up in Philadelphia, there was a lot of them. Many of them were German. Uh, I, I never went to any of them just to buy music, but my friends did, uh, but there were a number of them, and most of them were run by former first men of the village. Uh, and so, um, to keep tradition, to tradition alive, uh, we're going to perform Pink and Blue, and uh, now, <laughs> since we were talking about music stores, and accordions and so forth. I don't think any of the first men in the village back then could afford an accordion like this. So they had much smaller accordions. But believe me, when they came to America, they definitely tried to sell them in their music stores. And so here is Pink and Blue. <laughs> 